by an aircraft significantly smaller than the aircraft actually is. And that much, of course, was demonstrated so memorably at Farnborough in 1955 by the Avro test pilot Rolly Falk, who rolled one of the prototype Vulcans. And uh, well, we see something of that, don't we, in the very steep wing overs that the aircraft still to this day performs. Yeah, that's correct. We could, uh, yeah, the aircraft is capable of rolling, but uh, we're not allowed to do that. But uh, we do wing overs, and uh, we pitch up and uh, use uh, up to about 125 degrees of bank. Now, as you see now, the aircraft coming towards us, um, we'll be uh, doing one of those maneuvers right now, crowd center. And very poignantly, we remember today young Jason Ward and his brother Beverly Lepenia, who are very much missed by their family and friends. I know great support of them. Introduced a, a P axis on proud uh, arrival. Um, the rest of the display is very similar as you may have seen in the past, uh, consisting of wing overs and steep turns. Uh, Bill Ramsey flying the aircraft uh, at the moment is bringing the aircraft back in the left hand turn um, and uh, will be uh, performing the, uh, the bomb bay turn. So, uh, camera's ready um, as the aircraft comes crowd centre. Uh, she'll start the right hand uh, turn and the bomb the doors will be opened, uh, showing you uh, the uh, large uh, expanse of the uh, bomb bay itself. How appropriate, as always, to see XH558 performing here at Waddington. We're in Bonner country, of course, here up in Lincolnshire, and for many years Waddington was itself not just the base for Vulcan squadrons, but the base of this aircraft. Turbojets with 16,400 pounds of power each, and look at that huge windspring span of 111 feet, just a little bit bigger, would you believe, than an Airbus A318. Hmm. It's perhaps hard to believe from the very advanced look at this aircraft's design, that this was a machine that first flew in prototype form, then known as the Avro 698, in 1952. Yes, from the hands of the remarkable Roy Chadwick, and who would believe that just 11 years earlier, the Lancaster, which he also described, um, took flight as well. I mean, an amazing turnaround in technology in the space of little over 10 years. Quite, quite an achievement, and it all started, I understand, with a scrappy bit of paper on that. And I'll join wondering whether this could actually fly. and never really saw, uh, of course, the great success of this uh, aircraft and uh, his work taken on by a band of very, very able engineers just as uh, those supporting the aircraft here today. It was really a mark of the success of the V force as part of Britain's nuclear deterrent during the Cold War years that the Vulcan didn't actually have to go to war until the Falklands in 1982.
new for this season as a uh, idle power spiral descent back down the similar kind of uh, ground track. Yes, catching us out there slightly. Bill did mention that he was going to climb, and put it next. I didn't realise he was going to go quite that high. I mean, that's terrific, uh, a terrific addition uh, to the display this year. And uh, indeed, that uh, commemoration we were discussing there with the very aircraft that uh, left at your uh, 45 degrees 607 there, uh, completing a 7,760-mile round trip with 18 air-to-air -air recalls. Quite extraordinary and captained by Martin Withers, who is on board XH558 with Bill Ramsey today. Amazing, isn't it? Still doing the same thing. Absolutely extraordinary. Well, no, I don't know who's putting the strings there, I think. <laughs> I suspect it is. We have uh, five pilots as part of the team. Uh, we share the flying and match this. Uh, obviously, some of us have got uh, day jobs. And uh, today, it's uh, Bill Ramsey's turn to uh, be captain and fly, so Martin's acting in a supporting role. But Martin is obviously one of our captains on the Okay, there you have it, uh, from the very man that's going to be doing this very same thing tomorrow, and uh, I think you're looking forward to that already, aren't you, Kevin? I am hoping the weather will be just as nice as it is today. Well, it's no surprise that uh, we mentioned that money is behind it, and indeed your support it to get this far has cost well in excess of £10 million, pounds, and uh, that included £2.7 million pounds as a heritage uh, lottery grant. And uh, in order to keep the aircraft flying, well, of course, it uh, is going to require your help again. And that's where Project 2015 comes in. And uh, as a result of extensive research with uh, Cranfield Aerospace, and I know there's a very interesting leaflet available. Predominantly, it all starts with the leading edges, but there's an awful lot of work. But very luckily, they have an extension uh, on the engine hours, which will see it through to that period. Of course, once I understand, Kev, that once the engines are gone, they're gone virtually. Uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, the engines and the airframe will probably uh, light out about the same time. So we're serious, realistically looking at 2014-2015 uh, seasons. Uh, at the end of 2015, the aircraft will be grounded, unfortunately. As we see the aircraft now up and left with the wheels down, uh, we're approaching the end of the display. Uh, Bill's going to raise the undercarriage shortly. And uh, new for this season, they'll be doing a 90 degree left turn onto the V-axis uh, to depart. And uh, then the final wing over left before he uh, comes back into land. Yes, uh, Ben, I was referring to that uh, support. It is extraordinary how much money has gone into this. But, uh, you know, uh, let's just look at the people out there today supporting it and right across the country. And, of course, a number of corporate sponsors as well who've given generously to the Vulcan to the Sky Trust over the years. Of course, the Civil Aviation Authority has been very supportive in all those endeavours. Likewise, the Aircraft Engineering Authority, Marshall Aerospace, and other firms giving tremendous support. AD Holdings, BA Systems, Beagle Technology, Cranfield Aerospace, EADS, Goodrich, Kearsley Airways, Megit, Messier Doughty, Rolls-Royce and Serco. Just bear in mind that this aircraft takes about £2 million a year to run. No aircraft is cheap to run, an aircraft of this size and complexity especially so. No, that's quite something to have in a private collection, isn't it? So, Kev, you were about to say something. Yeah, just to mention that uh, we haven't actually mentioned the AOs on board today. We normally fly with two, uh, with one, we've got two. Uh, Phil Davis is uh, the man in the seat today, and, uh, and he works for uh, Selex DS, who are very uh, good in sponsoring us and also giving him the time to do this work. And also uh, Jonathan Mazzari is, uh, is with us, uh, just joined the team. Uh, he works for Cobham and they do a very similar um, deal where they uh, release Jonathan to fly with us and so in effect uh, are sponsoring us as well. Very appropriately, the aircraft today lives at a former Vulcan base, what used to be RAF Finningley, now Robin Hood Airport, Doncaster, Sheffield. You can go and visit it there. You can go and join the Vulcan to the Sky Club. You can find out more about everything at www.vulcantothesky.com.
What a spectacle now for those of you in the right position as XH5A 